Hi, good morning everyone. Um, as promised, I said I would upload a uh, video as a review for the upcoming exam on Friday. Uh, just as a reminder, that exam is going to be covering chapters 4 through 6, uh, with the exceptions of sections 5.6 and 6.6. .6. We did not cover those in class, and I would not be expecting you to know that material for the exam. Uh, my plan is to have the uh, exam available on Canvas um, from Friday at 10 a.m. all the way through Sunday night. And now if uh, people have trouble taking that, I can extend it, or um, perhaps you could just take it late. But we'll see that. We'll uh, see how it goes. Um, just like in class, you will have a 50-minute time limit. And um, so once you begin that exam, uh, you'll only have 50 minutes to take it. All right, so for this review, you should um, probably either download or take a look at the um, uh, exam review PDF. Uh, I put a study guide on the canvas. So um, this will make a, a whole lot more sense if you uh, have that open and are looking at it. Uh, while you're watching this video. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, the first chapter will be chapter four. And um, basically, uh, the first two sections, 4.1 and 4.2, uh, they're trying to answer the question of what can geology tell us about the history of life on Earth. So chapter four um, looks at some different processes. You could see volcanism, plate tectonics, um, as well as Earth's magnetic field. And then 4.2 talks about uh, rocks and fossils, um, radiometric dating, different ways of, of figuring out the timing of when life began, when different um, evolutionary things happened, uh, things like um, evolutionary milestones and or extinctions, uh, what are the dates of those things, um, basically giving us a history of what happened. Uh, as we move on to section 4.3, um, that's looking at uh, when and where did life form. Uh, basically, what were the conditions of the early Earth? Um, one thing we talked about here um, was uh, primarily the atmosphere. Um, where did Earth's atmosphere come from? Um, especially looking at the atmosphere during the Hadean time, the earliest part of life. Um, and then we also focused a little bit on uh, the surface of the moon, um, the late heavy bombardment, uh, what these impacts may have done to uh, life on Earth, the fact that they provided water, and also may have been um, extinction events, and formed the moon. So, 4.4, uh, we talked on 4. through 4.6, 4.4, uh, 4 5, and 6, all um, big picture looked at um, how... Did life survive and evolve um, maybe I should take a step back there. Sorry. How was life able? to survive 
and evolve for so long. We're thinking about, um, you know, roughly four billion years. So that's a long time. And so we talked about uh, first and 4.4 geologic processes. Um, if you're looking at the study guide here, um, or I guess we looked at the Earth's uh, core, mantle, and crust, um, the magnetosphere, magnetosphere, um, differentiation, and then we talked about um, plate tectonics and seafloor spreading. So this sort of set the stage um, for talking about greenhouse gases and warming the earth and the carbon dioxide cycle, uh, which all require um, the plate tectonics that we talked about in 4.4. And then also in 4.5, we talked about climate cycles, snowball earth, um, basically big picture, how was the climate hospitable for so long? And then in 4.6, we talked a little bit about... Um, looking again at the moon, because this is very important for stabilizing uh, orbital elements, uh, things like how far we are from the sun and what our tilt is and how eccentric our orbit is. So where did the moon come from? Uh, moon evolution uh, theories. So um, again, we were in this chapter looking at uh, geology, uh, rocks, both here on the moon, what they can tell us about the timing of when um, life formed here on Earth, and how that life was able to survive. How was our climate made habitable um, for such a long period of time? All right, moving on to Chapter 5, we switch gears here. And the main thing we talked about here um, was life itself. And so in Chapter 5.1... Uh, section 5.1, I should say, we talked about um, the definition of life. Uh, what is life? Uh, this also was carried on through sections 5.2 and 5.3. Um, we basically talked about what is life. Um, what does it mean to be alive? Um, what are the main constituents of cells, cell membranes? how those differentiate the living parts of the universe from the non-living parts of the universe. Um, we talked about um, the organelles in the cell. We talked about uh, building blocks of cells, carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, proteins, enzymes, nucleic acids, RNA, DNA, all of those things. And uh, then in 5.3, we talked about what does nut life need to survive? And it primarily needs um, building blocks and so that would be like carbon and we also need a source of energy, either chemical energy or energy from the sun. As we moved on to 5.4, um, we talked about... Uh, the physical mechanism of evolution. And so there we talked about DNA replication and how that can, uh, through uh, mutations, uh, basically can lead to new organisms or new features in organisms. Uh, if that goes on long enough, you end up with new species. And then we talked about, uh, lastly in 5.5, uh, what environments can life survive in? And then uh, we skipped 5.6. Again, I won't expect you to um, know that stuff for the exam. So again, one more time, big picture, chapter five was all about life, defining life, what is life, what does it need to survive, and where are the places it can survive in. All right, uh, finally moving on to chapter six, 
um, here. Uh, big picture, we talked about uh, the specifics of what life looked like when it first evolved, um, how it may have evolved, uh, and then um, how it evolved into the modern species and particular uh, modern humans. So in, whoops, in 6.1, through 6.2, we were really looking at uh, why and how did life begin on Earth. And we talked about the stromatolites, the first uh, fossil evidence of life. We talked about how life probably started in volcanic hot springs or deep sea vents, the black smokers. And then we talked about the Miller-Ure experiment, um, how life may have uh, naturally formed and evolved, um, uh, basically arisen through natural processes. Uh, we talked about how this could happen in, in the quote-unquote RNA world uh, with clay and self-replicating RNA and how primitive cells may have formed out of little uh, lipid bubbles uh, wrapping themselves around these um, early RNA strands. And we even talked a little bit about the idea of panspermia, where life may have been brought to Earth from some other place, either on a comet or uh, asteroid. Moving on to 6.3 and 6.4, um, big picture there. Uh, what were the evolutionary milestones on Earth. So what were the main things that happened uh, that we saw as life um, arose? So we talked about how the first organisms were probably um, anaerobic organisms because there was no oxygen, and then they evolved, um, started incorporating through symbiotic relationships uh, various organelles into them, uh, mitochondria, um, they incorporated the ability to do, um, photosynthesis with chloroplasts, and these were eukaryote cells then, and then we had the Cambrian explosion where life diversified, uh, eventually moved on to land, um, and we talked a lot about the rise of oxygen and the important of, uh, importance of oxygen and oxidizing reactions, how these added a lot of uh, energy um, for life, allowing it to be um, bigger and more complex. Although um, oxygen also had the effect of causing extinctions. So moving on to, oh, I guess 6.4 was extinctions because these are also drivers of evolution. Um, and that was primarily focused on impacts like the KT boundary event. Uh, but we also talked about the rise of oxygen, uh, supernovae, volcanism, uh, differing mutation rates, how all of these things could lead to extinction events. And then in section 6.5, we focused on the evolution of modern human, um, talked about, uh, so where did modern humans arise? Um, not so much where physically, but where in the uh, family tree did they arise? Um, uh, our common ancestor with um, other apes and primates, uh, and then uh, how we uh, arose out into modern humans uh, 20,000 years ago or so. And then we talked a little bit about the continued evolution of man and the sort of question of are we still evolving? All right, so again, big picture for chapter six. Uh, we talked about uh, what the earliest life forms likely look like, 
uh, where those early life forms came for, from, either arising um, spontaneously through natural processes here on Earth or brought from uh, other star systems or planets, perhaps in our own star system, our own solar system. Um, and then we talked about how life evolved um, through all of the different various organisms and extinction events and how that has finally led to modern man. All right, so that's about it. Again, for chapter 6.6, .6, I forgot to mention this, uh, but we didn't cover this in class either. And so I wouldn't expect you to know that for the exam. That was a little bit on um, uh, artificial intelligence. Very interesting, but it just seemed like a little beyond the scope of the course. So um, that's about it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, I can answer your email questions directly. Uh, I'll try to be um, pretty quick with those over the next uh, few days until the exam. And if you would really like to speak with me, quote unquote, in person, I would be happy to set up a Zoom meeting um, so that we could meet uh, uh, that way. All right. Uh, have a good day and um, good luck studying.